All right, Kelly Wardlaw is the eighth grade science teacher at Stillwater Junior High. And we, um, we've we known Kelly for a few years. She's presented at some other conferences for us and everyone always enjoys her workshops. Um, I can remember one that she did with watermelon and Play-Doh. And so that was one of uh, my favorite ones that she did for us. And I know that you're going to enjoy today's session. So I'm just gonna turn it over to Kelly. Thanks, Kelly. Um, so my name is Kelly Wardlaw, like Audrey said, um, and I am the eighth grade science teacher at Stillwater Junior High. Um, I also do some work uh, on a volunteer basis with NASA as a solar system ambassador master teacher. So very excited about the newest Mars rover that's on its way to Mars right now. It launched early, early this morning. I don't know if any of you guys got ever watched the launch or not, but it was pretty exciting. Um, and today we're going to talk a little bit about some engineering and um, using apples to kind of help us out with that. So we're going to start um, with kind of an icebreaker activity called Apple Towers. This is an activity from the Fruits, Nuts, and Veggies Oh My book um, that Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom put out. And it's kind of a variation on some of those towers that I know some of us have probably done in our classroom before. Um, I've done one with spaghetti and marshmallows. This one is using apples and toothpicks to make those towers. Uh, you can just skip that slide. And, ooh, fun fact. Um, so I put in some little fun facts about apples as we go through here. Uh, so this one says it takes the energy from 50 leaves to produce one apple. And Johnny Appleseed was actually a real person. Does anybody know what Johnny Appleseed's real name was? You can type your answer into the chat there if you want to play along. Any guesses? And everyone remember that whenever you're doing your comments to make them go for all panelists and attendees so that we can all see them. And Melody jumped in. No one else is going to do it. She's going to have some fun. <laughs> John Chapman, there we go. That is. There oh, here, go. here come Chapman some more answers. Was his real name? And I'm in the Ag in the Classroom on Johnny Appleseed. It's a little more elementary, um, but he is kind of an interesting individual um, and really quite an entrepreneur and uh, planted a lot of apples. So I got to say the Apple Towers, um, which should be the next slide. So this is just the first of the materials. Um, you use apples and toothpicks is basically all you need. Um, dealing with older kids, you could actually give them, like you can buy those little snack packs of apples at the store. So you could give every student their own little stuff. And then however many toothpicks you want to use, you could let them break the toothpicks up if you want, or you could tell them that the toothpicks have to stay whole. Um, just a plastic knife works really great for cutting those apples up into smaller chunks. If you want to let them cut them up into smaller chunks, or you know, you can set limits on how big the apple pieces have to be. Paper paper is really great to build on. Um, and then paper towels or maybe some wet ones to help clean up. This one will work really good, especially if we're looking at not sharing materials this next school year, because like I said, you can give this to each individual student. So they would have their own materials and they wouldn't be sharing things. Um, so this was uh, my daughter here. We made apple towers in class or at, at home the other day and she was super excited about it. I will tell you that one of the biggest challenges I think with the apple tower was trying to keep her from eating all of our building materials. So that may be a duel with your students. But this is a fun kind of a problem solving um, icebreaker type of activity. It doesn't take very long for them to do. Um, and get them thinking about apples and, and uh, 
putting stuff together. So I think we got another fun fact. The science of apple growing is called pomology. Does anyone know which plant family apples are a member of? Apples are a member of which family of plants? And Kelly, your um, internet is buffering just a little bit and it's difficult to hear you sometimes. So um, maybe either talking slower or also sitting closer to the computer might help a little bit. Okay. Sorry about that. No, that's all right. I don't know. Sometimes our internet is better than others. That's better. We can hear you there. So that might help. All right. Any guesses on which plant family apples are a member of? I'm seeing Rose. Anybody else? Any other guesses? They are a member of the Rose family, so you might keep that in mind for the next Valentine's Day. Much healthier alternative to a dozen roses. You could give your sweetheart a dozen apples, probably a little more healthy. Two. All right, so the next activity, really the main activity using the engineering design process. Um, there's a link, I'm sure Melody probably has this link and she's gonna put it up there. I think she put the link in there for the fruits, nuts and veggies book. If you don't have a copy of this, it's on their website. The engineering design process worksheet is also on their website. Um, you can see a picture of it there on the screen, um, but it's got the engineering design process on it. One the reverse side has sort of those steps and places for the students to write their answers in there. So they would identify the problem, brainstorm some solutions, they can draw a picture of their prototype, um, write down what materials they need, how they're going to put it together and then testing it and making changes, what worked and what didn't work. One of the biggest challenges, I think, when doing um, an engineering activity, something that's a little more open-ended, is the kids sometimes can get frustrated or they have a hard time uh, wrapping their head around that idea that there's not really a right answer and it's okay if it doesn't work exactly the way you think it's going to, that it's more of a process um, that you go through. And you know, if it doesn't work the first time, then you try something else and you see if you can get it to work. The next challenging for some of our students, they just want to get sort of the right answer, the right thing and move on. And that process can be challenging. So with this activity, if you wanna to go to the next slide there, Oh, we have another fun fact. This one goes with our, our challenge. Most apples are actually still picked by hand. So how many apples do I need to pick to make one gallon of apple cider? Very popular drink, especially in the fall. Any guesses? How many apples do you need to make a gallon of apple cider? You guys want to type your guesses in the chat box? That would really help Kelly out. So I'm seeing, and make sure that it says all panelists and attendees so that others can see it as well. I'm um, seeing 30 and 50. Let's get some more guesses coming in here. 30, 40. 40. 50. 50. That 75. It's apples to create one gallon of apple cider. So I think it looks like Christy was probably the closest. Sherry got it right on the dot um, with 40 and 36. So about 36 apples to make one gallon of apple cider. All right, so our um, activity is to engineer an apple picker. And the problem there is they need to design, build, and test prototype for a robotic apple picker. Um, and then the constraints, these are the limitations that they have to, to work within. They have to use the materials that are provided. Um, you want to talk about how you don't want to bru bruise the fruit or damage the tree. Because if you bruise the fruit, 
then you're not going to be able to sell it. And if you damage the trees, then they may not be able to produce apples in the future. And then, of course, always project has to be completed within whatever your time limit is for that. Um, I would probably do this activity over a couple of days. Um, usually, kind of start brainstorming ideas and coming up with a plan and then give them uh, maybe one or two days with the material and then sort of a final day to kind of wrap it up and to write up their um, their results. I think the next slide shows the materials. Um, again, this one's pretty nice because most of the materials for this are pretty cost um, friendly or pretty, uh, pretty easy to get a hold of. Um, empty toilet paper rolls, just have to start saving them. Um, I think you can find toilet paper in the grocery stores now, so it's not quite the shortage that it was, although a lot of people may have a surplus of toilet paper rolls. Yeah, because of all of that toilet paper. Um, straws, the bendy straws um, work really well, or just regular straws are fine. Um, string, I use just like sewing string, but you could certainly use something a little thicker if you have it. Um, two that I sort of modeled this off of, um, said to use clay, like modeling or air dry clay. You can see a picture of it there on the left side. That was sort of uh, the model that I used. And then the one on the right with the little pom-pom apple is the one that I made. So you can see I didn't use modeling clay for mine. Um, I didn't add the little tiny rubber bands on there for grippers, although you could certainly have those available for them to do that. I just used straws, tape, string, and a toilet paper roll to make mine. Um, so you can see as when you pull on the string, um, those little fingers, the straws sort of close in. It takes a little bit to get it right. So the straws close in and then you can pick up your pom pom or your apple off of the tree. Uh, I think, Audrey, if you click on the the picture there on the left, I think there's a link to the website. Maybe? Maybe mm, not. I can see it. Can you guys see it? Are you able to see the website, the Science Buddies website? I don't see the website. I'm just seeing Okay, the, um, one second. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and go to my desktop. Kelly, we did have one question come in while she's okay. up. How is the string attached to the straws to make them pull and move? So you caught, I don't know if you can see this or not. I'm trying to figure out how to get it on there. You cut like a little diamond shape and the straw. I mean, this is the trickiest part is you have to use a needle to poke a hole in and then tie that string up above it. So my string, and I tied it all the way around. Um, the website that you should have a link for has really nice pictures on there. It's super easy to follow that you can look at. Um, but I just tied mine around the straw here, and then you poke a little hole in it with a needle, and then run that string all the way down through your straw so that it comes out the bottom here. And again, this is kind of a sample on how to make it. Um, depending on the level of your students, you can give them as much direct you want. Um, with some of my students, we do several engineering projects. So I don't necessarily give them as much information or as much detail on how to do it, um, but I let them come up with their own designs. And on the handout, I think you guys are going to get access to a folder with the presentations and the handout system in there. Um, and all my resources at the end, there's a couple of other, NASA's got several different a robotic hand. There's one that you actually model off of a hand and you use little pieces of straws and strings to pull the fingers down um, that they could build. 
Um, and then there's another one that models like the end effector on the International Space Station, which is a little different design that uses styrofoam cups. So you can give them some of those different ideas and then let them kind of pick and choose. And then, you know, maybe hybrid, make, take some ideas from one, some ideas from another. All right. I think it's time for another fun fact. You guys ready? This goes back to my space. The first meal that an American astronaut ate in space was applesauce. It was in one of those little pouches, kind of like you can buy those little pouches of squeezy applesauce, my kids call them, um, at the grocery store. Who was the astronaut that enjoyed that delicious applesauce meal? All right, everyone make your guesses in the chat box. Who was the astronaut that enjoyed the first Applesauce in space. It's kind of interesting to think about when we were first sending people into space, we didn't really know how that would work. Would people be able to eat things in space? Would, you know, it go down into your stomach the way it was supposed to, or would it sort of get stuck because of the microgravity environment? So it's kind of risky of applesauce and hoping that, you know, it, uh, it went down into their stomach and not somewhere else. All right. It was John Glenn, who was also the first American in orbit and also the oldest American in space, the oldest astronaut. When he traveled back to the International Space Station later, they did some really good research on um, osteoporosis with that. I think that was Cynthia got that one. So good job, Cynthia. All right, so these are the resources. Um, again, the first two there are the Ag in the Classroom resources with the fruits, nuts, and veggies, and then the engineering design process for Kate, and you can get both of those online. And then um, the example that I showed was the first one there um, from Science Buddies, and then I believe on the next slide, additional resources there. There's lots more interesting facts and tidbits on the Ag in the Classroom uh, Fruit of the Month. They had a whole Fruit of the Month page on apples. And then those are the other robotic um, hand and robotic arm designs that you can look at there from NASA that may give your students some other ideas on building their designs. And I think we have one last fact. Oh, any questions? And then I like this. An apple inspired Sir Isaac Newton to uh, Sir Isaac Newton's universal law of gravitation. What will an apple inspire you and your students to do? Another interesting side note, Newton came up with, uh, with that law and a lot of his laws of motion, I believe, during a quarantine. Kelly, we did have one yeah. person talk about just an idea of something to do with their class is apple nutrition, along, yeah. you know, kind of add in addition to what you talked about today. Definitely, definitely. And like I said, there's a lot of other apple facts and information out there that you can add to this and create a whole apple unit on, um, on different activities. Planning on us building. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to switch and go to a virtual one when your ma main workshop activity is a tooth is a tower challenge so an yeah. engineering challenge and a robotic hand challenge but those are some great ideas uh, that they can use with their students yeah I hope so and um, if they have any questions or anything my email is on there feel free to email me um, and take a look at those websites. I would encourage all of you after this to, um, to try out. You probably have all of those materials for the, uh, the little robot hand um, or robot apple picker on hand. Um, so try them out this afternoon. If you have kids, get them involved and help them build it. My oldest daughter helped me build this one and my youngest daughter, of course, helped me with the, uh, the apple tower since I don't have any students right now. Um, and I didn't have any pictures when we did some of those things in class. So, 
All right. Well, thank you, Kelly. I'm going to show you guys some um, links on our uh, website and also on the National Ag in the Classroom website. So um, I feel like that is a great resource, especially for the high school teachers that um, sometimes we don't get to share with you uh, when we're doing sessions, um, everything that there is to offer. So let me adjust my screen because all I can see is my Zoom toolbar right now. Um, okay, so when you're on the Ag in the Classroom website for Oklahoma, a few uh, places that I wanna point out on here for you are the classroom resources. We do have several resources that are appropriate for high school students. Um, one that we're working on right now uh, that will be in soon is our career Opley board game. And so hopefully we'll be getting the preview for that and we will make sure that all of you um, get that resource whenever we get it because you're participating in our conference today and typically we would send those out to you. Um, so we will make sure that you get that, but you can request our resources on our website. You can also preview all of the resources. One thing that we have, and I'm gonna hit download on a few of these and come back to them. Um, we have high school financial literacy cards. Uh, Kelly showed you the engineering process. Right here is where you can request that. So whenever you click, you can um, use them on your boards with your students, or you can request and we can send you a class set of them. Um, but those are the ones that Kelly showed you, so that's where you could find them. We also have um, smart board activities, and we have several Kahoot games. So I know high school students love Kahoots. They get a little bit competitive with them. And we have these that they can play on their own, and they're broken down. Um, so the third grade and up, those are definitely appropriate for high school. I just wanted to let the younger students know or the younger teachers know that their kids probably could play them, but most likely they're meant for middle school and high school students. Um, down below, these are ones that you could use with your students in class. So this would be the tra traditional Kahoot where you are um, sharing the Kahoot game on your screen and they're answering the questions. And we have one for an apple a day, so that would go great with the lesson that um, Kelly just shared with us. As you go down, you'll see, I think there's well over 50 Kahoot games. I haven't counted them recently, but we have a lot of Kahoot games that you can use with your students. Any questions so far about the resources? Let me check, let me pull my chat box up too. Except for I think whenever I do this, everyone can see it. So, um, I think so. Okay, someone's saying their, their grandchildren love Cropopoly. We hope everyone loves the Careeropoly when we get it. All right, on the website, when you're looking for lessons, you can search by grade level. So uh, we have tried to make it simple for you to find those lessons that are intended for high school. You can um, see their title, the standards, the grade level. We have several algebra lessons, several science. We have some English language arts, some social studies lessons. So we, we tried, um, we are updating lessons. So they're going to have all of the new standards on them. And uh, Susan Murray that's joined our team this week is going to be helping update these lessons for you. Just a, a quick look at how many we have used to. Our lessons uh, were mostly for elementary, but now, thankfully, we have several high school lessons. Um, on our homepage, and I want to make sure that you guys know about these other resources, because sometimes they get overlooked and they're beneficial for you. First of all, at the top, the Oklahoma Port Council provides grants for teachers to teach Ag in the Classroom lessons. So six grants are awarded in the fall and six in the spring. The deadline September 15th. All of the information that you need to know to apply is on the website and it's a very easy to apply for that grant. Uh, we would love to have lots of um, applications this, this year. 
If you scroll down to the Oklahoma Ag Organizations, this is a page that will take you to different groups in the state. They um, all have resources or um, displays or presentations that they can bring to your school or send to you. Southwest Dairy has a mobile dairy. And I think a lot of times when people hear about the mobile dairy, they tend to think it's for the elementary, but they do a fabulous job for high schools as well. Um, Frank Hardin, if you missed his session last week at the Noble Research Institute, they have ag trunks that they can send to you with experiments for your students. Um, those are free and the return shipping is free as well. Farm Bureau has a commodity trailer that they will bring to your school, um, talk to your students about agriculture commodities. Also for high school students, they have um, DUI training and um, defensive driving training as well. So those are a couple of other things um, that they have to offer. And um, Dairy Max has grants that they can write. And then if you were able to do and uh, cooperative program with your elementary students this year, you could have the farm to you come to your school, your high school students could man the different rooms and share the information and the elementary students could participate in the activities. So this year where things are being closed down and maybe less field trips, um, that might be an option for your school. Melody and Emily, whenever I'm doing this, I can't see the chat box or um, everything else comes up too. So if there's anything that I need to stop for, be sure to interrupt me. Okay, this is the national website and under the teacher center, you can choose curriculum matrix. This is a great resource for our high school teachers because they have full-time staff working on uh, lessons and writing them for all ages. I'm just going to type in apples and we will see if there are any um, Apple high school lessons. I have previewed for others, but not um, for this one. You can type in the content. You can type in the grade level. Um, you can search by Common Core Connections or Ag Literacy Connections. So with apples in high school, we're going to get apples in the science of genetic selection. When you get to this page, their lessons are set up just a little bit different than ours. One thing that I want to point out is they have this My Binder option. So this is a way for you to save lessons on the national website that you want to use again and again and you can um, find them quickly. So the My Binder, this won't let you save the Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom lessons that you're using, but it will let you save the national ones. As you scroll down through, you can see there are um, several different station activities. And again, this is a high school lesson. They have videos, they have web page links, um, some recipes are on here talking about genetic engineering and GMOs, um, Arctic apples, and then essential files. So these are the files that you would need to download, possibly print out ahead of time to be able to teach the lesson um, or just be familiar with. Vocabulary for your students, some did you know fun facts like Kelly shared with us, and then the background information. This is always great and we include this on our lessons as well. So if you're not familiar completely with what it is that you're teaching, this gives you that background inf information that you need in order to be able to teach your students. Also on the national site, they will point out when they have the phenomena storylines for you. So they've pointed that out on this lesson and then the interest approach. So getting those students engaged they um, also are working on an e-learning site for distance learning, so they have a few resources there as well. Then it will walk you through the procedures and um, give you some different activities. If you join Jocelyn's session this morning, um, then you know how you can take this and make it an interactive um, page, or if you were on a Jamboard session with Tammy, 
um, she mentioned Jamboards, you could do this Venn diagram that way as well. So if you miss those, you'll be able to um, log into them after next week once we share them out. But as you can see, um, Nationals is uh, set up just a little bit different, but it's a great resource for you. And if we go back up to the top and I take off the apples and we just search by grade level and we do high school, this will give you an idea of the broad range of lessons that they have available for high school teachers. Um, so as we scroll down through, you can see there's a variety of different lessons um, that you can go and investigate and look at for your students, determine which ones you might want to use. Um, most of these are going to have the science background, which is great since this is a science session. Um, I'm going to guess that most of you are science teachers. I know not all of you are, and not all of these lessons are science. Some of them are going to be math or ELA related. But you can see they have a variety of lessons. So in addition to the ones on the Oklahoma website, you can have access to these. And just like ours, their lessons are free. Now, the difference for National is they do sell some things. So for Oklahoma, all of our resources are free. And whenever you ask us to um, send you the magazines or the um, student readers or anything like that, we send them to you for free. With National, they have a store and their store is not free, but their store is very reasonable and it's fantastic. We ordered some things from them. We got them super fast and it was even um, during the time of not complete shutdown, but, but when most things were shut down. So as you're looking um, through the lessons, there might be links that bring you back to the store. There might also um, just be activities in here that you would want to order to go along with something that you're already doing in your classroom. So possibly uh, if you're doing anything with plants and what they need to grow, maybe greenhouse effects, things like that. Um, they have this kit. There are DNA kits, pollination simulation kits just a variety of resources. Whenever these come, I am going to click, let's see. Um, we'll do this one just for, just for sake of showing it. So everything that you need to do the activity uh, will come with the kit. It gives you a description. It tells you how many students. So this particular one, they send you 35, enough to do 35 um, of the activity with 35 students. Um, some of them are set up a little bit differently. Also the com companion resources. So um, don't forget to search there. Don't just look at the high school, but take a, take a look at these as well. Um, also on the national website. Let me go back over to the teacher center. Uh, they have the ag literacy outcomes. So we have our Oklahoma state standards, the ag literacy outcomes when they uh, developed these, these are what national ag in the classroom would consider an ag literate student. So um, things that, that they need to know by grade level. So I'm going to scroll down through. We'll just do theme two, plants and animals for food, fiber, and energy. And these are broken down so that you can see for high school students what would, um, what would be considered an ag, liter ag literacy outcome. So uh, these are available on the website and you can find them quickly and easily. Also on the website, um, let's see, for national are the state ag facts and um, virtual tours. So these are some resources that you might want to check out uh, to get your uh, students a little bit more um, involved. And then to go along with our career Opley game that's coming out, on the national site, they have the Career Seeker. 
So agcareers.com, this is a great website. Our game, we got most of our information from this Ag Explorer website. They also have 40 short videos about careers in agriculture. And um, then some more links here about careers in agriculture. So all of that to say that whenever you receive the game, um, you have more available that you can use uh, for, your, for your students to teach them about the careers that are involved in agriculture. Because I think a lot of times when you talk to high school students and you talk about careers that are available in agriculture, their first thought is, I don't want to be a farmer, or that's all that they can think of as a career for agriculture. Um, but what they need to realize is if they enjoy science, um, whether it's science for soil or animals or um, insects, that those careers are all connected to agriculture. If they enjoy technology, they can use um, that interest to develop uh, technology for agriculture. They're often fascinated to find out that we have tractors that can now drive themselves. Uh, GPS is used for agriculture all the time so that when fertilizer, chemicals, watering, and things of that nature are being done in the field, that we are putting down the right amount at the proper times. So there's lots of careers that are involved in agriculture, and that's why we are developing the Career Opley game to um, help spark that interest for students and to uh, get them to be engaged and to think about the possibility of um, being involved in agriculture in other ways. Melody and Emily, do you guys have anything else that you want me to pull up to share with them? I'm looking at the comments here. Could you do more facts education lessons? Um, let me show you on the national site. National has, um, national has several lessons for facts. So let's go back to the curriculum matrix. Also, Audrey, I did tell Sherry to send us an email with any specific thing that she was looking for and okay. work on something like that, but be great to see the ones that National has. Yeah, we would love to do more in Oklahoma. National received a grant, and so they were able to write these, and several of them start with this cooking, right? Um, not all of them start with that. There are some that have the farm to fork food safety, food science, and food master. So on the national site, all I typed in was facts, and you can see there are several lessons that you could use in your facts classrooms. If you're not the facts teacher, be sure to let your uh, facts teachers know about these, because this is a great resource um, that's available to include that agriculture component in your classrooms, um, and it's something that not everyone knows is there. Do you want to show them also the uh, did you know posters? Yes. Yes, I will do that. Let me go back to our page. So again, under our resources, under the classroom resources, um, we have two different sets of posters and these are gonna download probably, uh, well, no, actually, I forgot. Okay, so the Harvest of the Month posters, we've had these for a while. If you've been around Ag in the Classroom very long, you have seen these, but they're still available on the website, and we have some of them still in print, so you can request, request that we send those to you. But the ones that Melody's mentioning, we have plenty of these that we can send out, and these are great. How would you rather eat? And we have calcium, fiber, iron, protein, vitamin C, and zinc. And so I'm gonna pull up um, the vitamin C one to share with you in just a second as soon as it downloads. And then also, did you know fun facts? So fun facts about bovine, canola and wheat, corn and cotton, legumes, pork and poultry, and sheep and goats. Um, and so let's see, we'll click the beef and dairy one to share. So whenever you get these posters, you'll get all 12 in one set, but um, here's what they look like. So this one, how would you rather eat vitamin C? And we have potatoes, tomatoes, cauliflower, strawberries, soybeans, spinach, 
bell peppers and cantaloupe. And we tried, yes. Like we're still just seeing the, we're not seeing the vitamins. Oh, because hang on one second. Let me share it correctly. Thank you for stopping me. Okay, here we go. Now, can you see it? Perfect. Okay, great. So with these, um, the serving size, the calories, and then um, how much vitamin C for this one is in each one. So uh, what I was saying earlier, we try to make sure different fruits and vegetables or meats or um, dairy products are on each poster. So you won't see tomatoes on every poster or strawberries on every poster. And this one's vitamin C, but there's not any um, oranges on it. So any guesses why we don't have oranges on that particular poster? Anybody, anybody? It's because oranges are not grown in Oklahoma. So we try to focus just on what, what we produce in our state. And then here, is the did you know fun fact about uh, bovine. So it only takes 48 hours for milk to travel from the farm to the store. Uh, 2002 is the official state beverage. And Melody's got a fun fact about milk and being our state, state symbol. So milk is our state beverage and our state drink. They were adopted in two different years. It's kind of strange. I have a more. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, if you want to bring up the Ag Mag, obviously it's not the new one that's going to be coming out, but I can talk a little bit about some of the updates and, and what that'll look like. I don't have um, the Dropbox version pulled up. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have that. If you guys want to make your screen come back where they can see you and I will see if I can find it. Oh, that way they're just not sh staring at my black screen. <laughs> okay um sorry i should have told you ahead of time but um anyway i don't have the dropbox version we're actually working on a new version of the oklahoma ag mag with our um anyway graphic designer and uh, you can just show the old version if you want to audrey and i'll just kind of go over what some of the changes will be okay i was looking real fast to see if i have the link to the new one but i don't think that i do so I always have trouble finding it. <laughs> yeah, let me let me just get our resources page and get it where I can share it while you're. Uh, this is a resource that's been around for a while, and whenever you see it, maybe you've seen it before. Um, anyway, I used to have it when I taught in my classroom. Um, but what's cool? This is a resource that's meant for middle school and high school students. But we are completely redoing it this year. Um, I've been working on doing that. I'm excited about some of the ways we're changing it. Um, so you may have seen the pig um, and you may have seen this magazine before, but we're just changing it up. Um, we're um, anyway changing a little bit of the agriculture definition, bringing in a little bit more science into that. Uh, we're also focusing a lot on um, the top 10 commodities um, as far as cash receipts that we have in our state. So basically what we uh, agricultural products that we mo make the most money off of here in the state. So we'll cover those uh, pretty strong within the magazine and then a few other ones that are in the top 10 we'll also cover and talk about. We're talking about gardening. We're also adding in an agriculture career section, uh, which I think will be great in addition to the game also. I'm actually in the works of, I have a lot of emails out and have heard from several um, people who are filling out basically interviews about their agricultural careers and they'll be featured in the magazine or um, kind of our hope is to also have a resource on our website um, that will link up with the um, careeropoly game where you can actually go and see interviews and maybe even see some vid video interviews when we're able to do that about people talking about their agricultural careers. It makes it uh, where students can see somebody in that career I think really helps um, younger people as well as older people in all types of agricultural careers. So we're really excited about that. 
I see you have uh, fruit, snatch, and veggies pulled up. Yes, and we have a few more of these books um, that are available in a spiral bound form. So you can request these where you request the other resources, um, but they're also on the website. And I just wanna make sure that, that you guys know in the center of this book, there are science experiments. So um, if you receive it, or if you just start browsing through it, you might start out in the art section or see the recipes and you might not think that it, it's something that you'd be interested in. The science experiments in the middle I believe that you would be interested in them as a high school teacher. And there's also some art projects. The Toothpick Tower Challenge is in here, which I've done with college kids, the Apple Toothpick Tower Challenge that uh, Kelly shared at the beginning. And college kids love that um, activity and get super competitive on who can make the tallest tower. Um, so this is a great resource for you as well. And I just wanted to point out that we do have it. All right, well, thank you guys for joining us. All of our resources are free. The Port Council grants, don't forget about those. And you can use those to purchase items from the National Ag in the Classroom um, website. So if you apply for the grant and receive it, then you could purchase things from the National Ag in the Classroom store to do those experiments with your students, to do those activities, maybe the cooking activities, uh, whatever it is that you're wanting to participate in. So that's a great opportunity for you. I am going to go ahead and close out this session. We have one more and it's going to be a great one about soil. So please um, log back in and join us and we'll see you in just a little bit. Thanks.